February's Garden Discovery Walk is at Kubota Gardens in Southeast Seattle. It's a favorite Seattle park open daily to the public. We chose this garden for the variety of evergreens planted by Mr. Fujitaro Kubota. Starting in 1927 as his home and nursery, Mr. Kubota, a Japanese immigrant, introduced Japanese garden design to the Pacific Northwest. The majestic trees and waterways, along with seasonal color and texture, make this a garden worth visiting many times during the year. My name is Peach, and I will be your guide to highlighting evergreen and deciduous plants, water features, and more. Welcome. Kubota Gardens was acquired by the city as a park in 1991. It's an historic garden of 20 acres in the Japanese style with rich native plantings. It is beautiful with its hills and valleys, streams, waterfalls, ponds and rocks, plus a wide variety of plant materials. I'm standing here next to a really small tree. It's a witch hazel, which is one of the first trees to bloom in the late winter and early spring. This bronze foliage is so amazing because it brings so much color on our gray days. And what you see next to it is a stewardia tree with this beautiful peeling bark. It's been well paired together. And of course we have a lot of evergreens behind. Trees along this path are a mixture of a variety of evergreens and deciduous, inviting us to be here in multiple seasons. What I love is the contrast in color and texture that we see as we walk along these pathways, finding hidden areas to discover Along this pathway, we visit a variety of trees that are part of the tree walk that has been created by the Seattle Parks Department. We're seeing some flowers coming up and blooming as early as this February. This hydrangea is in various stages of, of growth. Right now what you see is the old blossoms from last summer and into the fall. And they probably were blue or pink, various shades of pink. And then down here you can see the buds forming on the plant. So they're beginning to grow in these warmer sunny days. What looks messy right now and dry is beautiful texture for the birds and for the animals to hide in. But perhaps you can imagine in the summertime what this looks like when all the hydrangeas are in bloom. It's a lovely location to have a party or a wedding. Here I am walking along the trail where there's a golden larch tree that is currently looking very dead but it is the one evergreen tree 
that drops its needles. Mr. Kubota loved using rocks. Many of the trails that we walk on have rock outcroppings. What you can see in the background here are tall poplar trees that will be in bright green come early spring. One of the things that we discover on these walks are new varieties and species that we have yet to identify ourselves. What I'm showing you are some little evergreen shrubs that look like they're part of the cedar family. I'm standing here at the terrace overlook and the tall tree behind me is a grand fir that is about 200 years old. It's featured on the tree walk and you're invited to look and see these variety of trees along the way. One of the nice features about this garden is all of the Japanese sculpture and places to view the garden. Here I am standing in the overlook above the pond. Leaving the terrace overlook, I am taking stairs down to the pond and we'll explore some secret areas down there, including places to rest with stone benches. You may notice that the ground is covered with leaves and ferns making nice crunching sound underfoot. It's very shady in this spot. Comfortable place to rest. This area in the garden is called the historic garden because it's part of the original garden that's about four and a half acres and the Kubota family had built a pond here as you've seen and also planted many evergreens surrounding it on this level plateau that they called the terrace. From here, I'll be exploring some of the secret passageways and pathways that take us down into the other area of the garden. It is surrounded by scented plants, lovely smells, attracting pollinators, and making it very inviting as we move our way along. This little insignificant white flower has the most lovely fragrance in the winter time. Hi, I'm standing here in the Taniyoto Pine Grove. Originally there were 15 to 20 of these pine trees that have kind of an umbrella shape. And Mr. Kubota had planted quite a few of them and they haven't all made it in the 90 years since they were planted. But what you see here may be some replacements of the originals.
The pathway continues here into this open area. It's a lovely spot for gathering, outdoor rooms, and also for social distancing. You can see the variety of trees, evergreens, lots of different colors. So I will be entering the bamboo forest and moving towards the ponds and water features that you can find as you make the loop trail around the gardens. There's a strong Chinese influence in the architecture that you see with this bright red enamel bridge rail and arching walkway over the water. Much of what you experience here are reflections on the water mirroring the sky and the shape of the trees. Rocks and other paving stones have been made into pathways I cross over the pond for looking down and seeing the koi swimming underneath. Here we see another one of these colorful bridges and the water beneath the boughs of these trees. It's a hiding place for ducks, maybe raccoons. This beautiful magnolia. It's probably a star magnolia that'll be blooming soon. What's so interesting about these buds is that they're very fuzzy and soft. Probably in about one month, we'll start seeing the blossoms coming forth, and they are definitely star shaped white blossoms. So come back in the spring and see it. It's beautiful. This weeping blue Atlas Cedar is one of the featured trees on the tree walk at the Parks Department. Purus japonica is a lovely shrub. It has color year round. It's blooming right now. This ground cover that's in front, the purple ground cover is called a juga and it has a beautiful blue flower that will be coming out probably in May. And now we're beginning to see the bark on this amazing coral bark maple. The leaves down, you get a real sense of its structure and contrast to the plants behind. Here's another witch hazel that's blooming in yellows. And the heavenly bamboo, which is a nice shrub that gets these beautiful red berries the birds love. 
I'm standing in the Sahara cypress grove that used to be planted just for nursery stock. The Kubota family did not plan on these trees staying here as long as they have, but what's happened is that the lower branches have died off. So we have this lovely stand of all of these trunks. And above us are thread-like evergreen leaves. It's called the Farah Farah Forest, which is quite a mysterious place. The kids love to come and play hide and seek. As we finish up our walk through the Kubota Gardens, we want to thank the Kubota family for this lovely gift that they have given to all of us here in the city of Seattle. And we also want to remember the rich history that after being incarcerated in World War II, Mr. Kubota and his family rebuilt this garden and his business. This garden has been a historic landmark since 1981. It has 20 acres of trails, green space, natives, and perennials. The city of Seattle has preserved the Kubota legacy and vision for a public gathering space in the natural world. This week, February 19th, is the day of remembrance when we recognize the Japanese internment that happened here in North America during World War II. If you'd like more information, please see the Kubota Gardens. And finally, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this lovely walk, and I'll see you next month.